Hey there, it's Nev from the Ever Black Podcast here. Just letting you guys know that for the entire month of June, we're taking part in the Starlight Children's Foundation Stream Raiser campaign where we're going to try and raise some funds for some sick kids and teenagers and help brighten their lives a little bit. You can donate, share, whatever you can do to help out. It's much appreciated. And we've got some awesome guests coming up for this month as well. Uh, all the links are down here. In the meantime, stay positive, stay heavy. Horns high. Hey, this is Trevor Sternad from the Black Dahlia Murder here, and you're listening to the Ever Black Podcast. Hey, human scum, this is odorous from Guam. We're going to battle Fear Factory. This is George Corps, Commander Fisher. This is Jasmine Delacroix. This is Wade from Our Last Enemy. The magnificent Cool Battle Gun Fusion. Hey, is it Wednesday 13? This is Bruce Evans. Rex from Kill Devil Hill. This is Gary Spree from Simple Tour, and you're listening to Ever Black Podcast. All right, before we go into this episode, we just need to give a shout out to our show supporters, Blacklight Art and Design, who are our go-to for all our screen printing needs. Check them out at blacklightad.com.au. RW Promotion, who are the best in the biz for all your promotional printing needs like stickers, flyers, banners, badges, and more. Go order yours through rwpromotion.com.au. The Brutal Occult Clothing brand, Electric Witch, who have amazing apparel from shirts to hoodies to hats to beanies and more. Check out their full range of electricwitch.com.au and put in the code EVERBLACK for 20% off your order. Also, Lumberpunks Axe Rowing Club, who have venues on the Gold Coast, Brisbane and Perth, and it is a guaranteed good time for any occasion like parties, bucks, hens nights, or just hanging out with your mates. You can even join a team. Put in the code EVERBLACK for 10% off your booking at lumberpunks.com. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the EVERBLACK podcast through Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and Facebook, and check out all our articles at everblackmedia.com all right on with the show Of course, uh, the new Bremelin uh, album has just been released and it's massive return for you guys. I mean, it's the first album after two decades and it's called yeah. Never Enough Snuff. And uh, the response has been absolutely insane, man. Like, I can't go through my Facebook without seeing the album pop up or tracks or something, which is awesome. Did you expect that the response would be as big as what it was? You know what, with things like that, you just never know. I mean, I suppose our first show back, we were a bit wowed. Like we played, I mean, it was, it was pu- by pure accident we got together as a band again. Like, I, I don't know if you know this, but I play bass in the band now, but yes. I used to play guitar in the band in the 90s. And I put a show on, a benefit show, and I just, I got all my mates together. I mean, you know, I'll ring Tim, see if, he's, see if we'll put to, a Brimelon back together you know, to do this show for me. And they didn't have a bass player. So they're just like, you play bass. So I ended up playing bass and it all started from there. And we did this show and it sold out. And it was just like, it was huge. It was massive. We just did not expect, expect that. It was good. It was a good feeling. And that's, that's crazy. And of course, I mean, how was it jamming again after that time? Cause it was, it was it 2016 you said? Yeah. 2016 it all came. Oh, I think it was 2017. I can't remember. No, maybe it was 2016. I can't remember. But it was a few, it was a couple of few years ago now. But I, I mean, yeah, the first jam was weird, eh? Like, because it's funny. I'm going to say this because it's going to embarrass Dave. But it's been, I've, I've known Dave Haley for years, but yeah, yeah. Um, 
when I put the band together, they're like, I'm, I'm like, well, who's going to be in the band, you know? So we rang Dave. Dave's like, yeah, of course. And Dave it was such an Abramelin fan to begin with. Like, and we get to the studio and it was just me and Dave first. And he was nervous. <laughs> he was actually nervous. But, you know, only because like Dave grew up, you know, listening to Abramelin and, and I suppose yeah. then you're in the band. I've, I've done the same with Hobbs. I grew up on Hobbs and then played drums in Hobbs and it was just weird, like being in a band when you're a little kid watching them and then all of a sudden you're in them. It's just a bit weird. <laughs> I could imagine. Yeah, because, I, mean, I mean, you play guitar, bass and uh, drummer as well. You, you're a bit of jack of all trades there. But uh, why bass? Is it so you can drink more, so you can have a few more of these? It's the first time I've played bass in a band. <laughs> I, tell you what, I really do love it, especially in a brew because I'm not a natural guitar player. I, I just, like, I write, I write music for my other bands and stuff. But yeah, yeah. In, in a Bremlin, I, I prefer bass because it's just, yeah, I get to relax, especially playing live. It's unreal. Like, I can just neck them down while I'm on stage. <laughs> suck it, suck it to Tim and Matt. <laughs> You've got to think about what they're doing. <laughs> Mate, every bass player, every bass player I've ever spoken to, yeah, they've all said the same thing. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, Tim and Matt are just, like, you just, you put them two in a room and they're just shredding constantly. You got to be like, dude, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> they're just, they're just like they gun guitar players. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's always a way with guitarists as well. They yeah. never stop. Either that or drummers. <laughs> they're always <laughs> shit. Or like guitarists. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, never stops. And um, of course, what was the point where you guys said we got to, we got to get back in the studio? Let's make it a real thing. You know, it's funny. It was probably straight after our first jam for this one show we're only going to do one show well we're going to do one show this this um benefit and just see how it went mm. and then we had our one rehearsal and we all just went that was unreal let's do an album pretty much we saw that that's the the the, the thought came straight away we're like let's keep doing it <laughs> oh man that, i'm glad you did too because this album is it's fucking awesome it's yeah, like, I mean, Tim, Tim had these songs for years, you know, he just, he just kept writing. Mate. I think he, subconsciously he knew he was going to put another, a Bremelin record out and he's just like, so then when I rang him up and did this, I think it was just perfect timing. And it sounds fresh too. You know what I mean? You're, like, yeah. you're saying like, like uh, he's had all these songs for years. Yeah. But I mean, they don't sound dated. You know, you, you dig out old tapes and old riffs from years ago and you go oh that's of that time but it sounds very modern as well yeah, yeah, yeah. which is yeah uh, he, it's, it, it is yeah he yeah i think and i think it's because of the way we recorded the album too i mean dave brings another element to the band as well mm. and you know, it's obviously matt and simon's vocals i think this is the best vocals simon's ever done <laughs> on this record but i think dan swan i did a really good um a good job on mixing it oh i agree and as yeah. for the vocals man i think there's a lot of um there's a lot of choices in there that i, I haven't heard done in a in a death metal album if not ever or in a long time you know what i mean like it's got personality yeah. it doesn't sound like it's just growling it's it's it helps tell the story and uh, i think that's why people yeah. are rotating that's the thing with simon though since well, the funny thing, we all met so weirdly. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little background about how we all met. I, I used to play in a band called Conqueror in the 80s, right? And my first show ever that I ever played was with Arkron, and it was Arkron. It was Simon's first ever gig as well. I think it was in 87 or something like that. Anyway, so we all start hanging out. Then Tim wasn't in a band, joined my band Conqueror. Then after Conqueror split up, he joins Arkron. And it all just mashed into this Abramelin thing. But Simon, ever since we've known each other, has always been into horror. Like, he's obsessed. I don't know anyone who is so obsessed with horror. He, like, watches movies every day. <laughs> so, for him, it is storytelling. He just yeah, yeah. He lives and breathes horror. Man, it's so good. But, I mean, in regards to, you know, the horror and, you know, the lyrics, they're so brutal. Like, death metal lyrics. Yeah be brutal but in, yeah, yeah. In, in a funny way it's gonna it's shockingly funny you know what i mean like no yeah, one yeah. it's only the people that don't understand that take it too seriously seriously but it has yeah. there 
was there a point where you had to go, oh, that's a little too brutal, man? Or you just you what, go, let him go? One time we were at rehearsal and um, <laughs> so, Simon um, didn't have a sitter for his kid. So his kid's there and Simon's left his phone with all his lyrics just sitting there because, you know, he couldn't remember them all. And he's, his kid's like reading the lyrics and he snatched it, <laughs> realising, wow, my my kids have never wrote, read my lyrics. <laughs> he's oh, his kid oh, who's very young reading the lyrics. And, you know, you come to this thing because for us, it's all in, when he tells us his lyrics, we have these inside jokes, you know, but like we just find it sort of funny. But to him, like he does d- dig deep down and make yeah, a story yeah. out of it. And you can tell in the songs, I suppose. Oh, 100%. So, ha- yeah. so w- w- when his kid was reading it, it was the... Um, <laughs> how old? The phone. I'm, oh, I think the kid was like 13 or something or 12. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so I can't remember how old your kid is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. Oh man, yeah. that's awesome! And uh, yeah. there's a re-recorded version of uh, "Pleasures" on there too. Yeah, it was so hard to play that so fast. It's already a hard song to play, and then when uh, when we recorded it, it was just like that, like a couple of beat beats quicker. Yeah, <laughs> so, and I was just like, "Wow!" <laughs> so how did it come about to uh, record that? Well, look, because when, when I because when I left the band, I was doing other stuff. I was touring all the time and mm. I just didn't have time to do a Bremlin. Because the funny thing is I start, started in a Bremlin. I was their sound engineer. As, when, when they were wow. Arkron, I was, their, I was their sound guy. And then Shelby left and then um, I was just fiddling with guitar and Tim was at my place and we just started playing. So he's like, why don't you do it? And I said, look, I'll fill in, but you've got to find another guitarist. Next minute, I'm in the band. So I was in the band, I think, for like three, four years or something. Mm. And just before I left, we did Dead. We wrote Dead Speak, and then um, I left, and it just it went to shit. I think just a lot of shit happened, and it just went to shit. And then when Tim went to record it, we didn't have they didn't have a drummer or a bass player. They didn't have anything. That was just Tim and Simon. That's the best they could do. And I think they did a good job. Like, but they didn't have a drummer, and I think. That listening to that record, I'm not, we, we wanted to re-record the whole album. We actually spoke about doing the whole album again oh. with drums. Yeah, that was on the cards. But then we decided, let's just do Pleasures and see how we go with it. <laughs> and that's, what I, that's why we put Pleasures on it. Is it. I like it because it seems to tie the past and the present together. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I like it when bands do stuff like that. So. Yeah. And it was, I was just, it was, a, I think for Simon and Tim, it was a sore point too, because they did, it, like, they don't hate the record, but they mm. love the song. I just, the, the, the recording just let it down a little bit. And yeah, I think yeah. they're still and they just wanted to, yeah, there was talk about redoing it. I don't know if that's going to happen. There might be talk about a new record, but another record, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> oh, really? So, so I mean, <laughs> you guys got stuff cooking, obviously. Uh, Tim's always got songs. He's always got, you know, he's always at home playing guitar. Every time you call him, he's on the guitar. <laughs> so, I mean, you, did you record a lot of the demos as well? No, no. I, the only thing I, I, the only thing I played on, when we recorded that speak, believe it or not, we recorded, I played guitar on it and everything. Yeah. And um, the guy, at the time we were all pretty fucked up, you know, talking drugs and just, everything touring and stuff and the guy who was recording it fucked it lost everything and uh yeah we we lost that record so for years you know you know that was just a big burden on the band but like yeah like when when we did dead speak yeah it's it's man it's tim it's it's tim and simon they're they're the they're the main guys and when i joined the band i did contribute some songs on dead speak but tim and you know we all arranged them together but it was mostly it's mostly tim with his crazy picking and riffing. But I thought I saw, I thought I've seen some pictures of you guys, um, like recording vocals or something. Were you? Yeah, we did. De- oh yeah. We demoed some yeah, songs for, uh, for the new album. at yeah, my yeah, place. Yeah yeah. Bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we did that and I mixed them down just so we could get a vibe. Mm. We did three songs. I think it was, 
God, what was it? It was Full Gore Hall. Um, I love that song. Yeah, Full Gore Hall. Um, <laughs> Never Enough Snuff. And another song I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, we just demoed them, you know, that, as you do, just pre-production, see how, see how we sound and stuff. And it worked, worked pretty well. Did they change much? From Not when at you all. Them? No? Straight up? No. Nah. Yeah, because the, the, those songs... Uh, Never Enough Stuff was the fir- Snuff was the first one mm. that we wrote or t- that Tim brought to the, to the table. And so we jammed on it for ages, you know, and then, and then recorded it. So we already, that, those songs were, you know, in the, I think we jammed, we, two songs, it was Never Enough Snuff and Full Gore Whore were written way, were, were worked on as a band way before we did this album. But like we jammed on them for like months. And in regards to uh, touring, I mean, you've toured Australia and, and done some awesome supports. How would you compare it touring? I mean, obviously, you're not touring right now. No one can. But, you know, when you were playing, you came back playing shows. How would you compare yeah. it to back in the day when uh, Brad Moore was, was first active? It's, it's, it's so good. Like, it's weird because when we did it, we didn't know what to expect. We did it because we like it. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Right, and, and it was good to see Simon and Tim back together again. You know, and me and Dave would sit in the room and look at them, and it was good to see the vibe up again. You know, it was it was fun, and then to bring that to the lives, you know, into a live aspect, it was it was even better again to get the response we got. We just got so, such a good response for every show we've done. Oh, you know, knock on wood, knock on wood, and it's been <laughs> it, that's why we keep going because it's yeah. like why are we going to stop? It's fun. These we have a laugh like. We, we're always fucking having a dig at each other and laughing and, you know, and touring. And it's, it's just, it just adds to the fun of being in a band, especially if the crowd are into it. And it's what's important too. I don't yeah. know about you, man, but jam night is like the boys night, have a few beers, have a laugh, <laughs> but do all the... We don't jam much. <laughs> <laughs> we don't jam much, but when we do, like if we've got a show coming up, we'll probably do a, two jams or something. Yeah. Yeah, oh. but yeah, like, yeah, for us, it's like just whenever we get together, it's always a laugh. We always enjoy it. <laughs> and do you have plans on, uh, obviously, when everything uh, eases off, coming up here to Queensland, touring, maybe going overseas? Yeah, yeah we're, we've had heaps of offers. In fact, just before the lockdown, we had offers to come to Brisbane. And um, we're actually, me and Simon were talking about, doing the cd launches and just just about to like you know get some dates going and then the lockdown happens so yeah we'll be spewing on it but we're already talking about it as soon as it happens we're just gonna book some venues and do it just yeah. come play the gold coast man yeah <laughs> play i love the gold i love it yeah, it's good fun man have yeah. you have you played vinnie's another oh, band God. or anything like that I, i've been up there with earth and I can't remember what venue I played. I don't know. Probably the Shark Bar. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I get, I, I'm, I, like I said, I'm old now. I forget what venues I play in. I'm always drunk. Yeah, where yeah, are yeah. we? Let's <laughs> yeah, let's just, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not, I don't have to drive. I'll have a few of these. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's always the best because like, when you do home shows, You've always got to bring your own gear and it's a hassle, man. It's like, then you've got to work out how you're going to get your gear to the get home. But when you're on tour, you've got none of that. You've got a case. <laughs> That's yep. it. <laughs> That's it. That's exactly right. You know, even if you're playing like uh, the next city over, you've got to drag all your stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nah. No, no, too <laughs> where it's at. I, you know, I'm missing it. Yeah. But uh, hopefully soon, man, hopefully you and the boys can come up here and, and hit the road because the album is so strong and people are loving it so much. Um, yeah. I think that, uh, you know, it's good to have you guys back in action. Absolutely. I mean, it's a good time for death metal as well. Yeah, I reckon it is actually, you know, it's, it's weird. It's almost like the lockdown was in our favor as well because everyone had nothing else to do, but to listen to fucking music. Right. So it sort of worked in our favor, I suppose in that aspect you know, that was, you know, one thing we can take from it. But, you know, who knows if it had a, got a, as good a response if we, you know, w- w- weren't in a lockdown, you know, and people were doing their own shit. But, like, I think it did help because I know it, hap- it happened to me. Like, as soon as we were in lockdown, all I did was listen to music and want more music, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> good time to release a record. <laughs> I think it has, you're right, man. I think it's worked yeah. for a lot of bands. Hey, instead of, yeah. getting, it made everyone slow down a little bit and uh, take a bit more notice. So, but I, I think, I don't know, man, the album's strong enough. I think that it would have cut through anyway. So, you know, all yeah. credit to you guys, you know, don't want to take that away from you guys. Cause it is, uh, you know, I can't wait to see what you guys do next. That's for sure. You demo. Well, we're, doing, we're, we're talking about doing a video clip for either Fulgo Horror or um, Never Enough Snuff. We would, just before lockdown, the week before, uh, yeah, the week after lockdown, we we're supposed mm. to do a video clip. We're booked in. <laughs> Our first video clip, and then it, it went to shit. But yeah, so there's talk of doing it again now. It, whereabouts are you now, man? We, we're in, in, the in, in Melbourne. Yeah, okay, so you're in Melbourne, yeah. So yeah. Things, how, how's the, the restrictions down there? I haven't been paying that much of attention. I've been too busy working. Um, it's, they're starting to lift them a little bit now. As of today, we could open the tattoo shops. Yeah. And I think some bars can have like 10, 15 people or something like that in them. You know? But yeah, it's pretty crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just hanging a plague and even with that many people. Oh, you know, just, bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, missing it, missing it hard. But uh, I just want to go to a pub and have a drink with me mates. <laughs> I know, I know. We've had to do we've had to do a few sneakies over the last yeah. couple of months. You know, <laughs> not go to a pub, but you know, like you sit yeah, in the yeah. driveway. You know, act like you're delivering something. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, dude, it's been awesome hanging with you. And, uh, you know, I wish you and the boys all the best. And uh, the new Bremelin album, Never Enough Snuff, is out now everywhere. The links will be down here, there, everywhere. Uh, dude, thanks again, man. And uh, get your asses up for uh, some beers in Queensland as soon as it opens up. Sure, man. I'll see you in Queensland. The Goldie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude.